Hello everyone, Declan here, the editor of The Inside Job. In today's episode, Ayana interviews Anastasia Gorali, serial entrepreneur, successful businesswoman, and the founder of The Art of Aligned Living. Anastasia discusses her journey to success and gives advice on building a business and improving your life, both materially and spiritually. For more information on The Art of Aligned Living, go to www.artofalignedliving.com. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Inside Job. Today, I am graced with the presence of Anastasia Girali. She is a rapid transformation therapist and coach, and she's also the founder of The Art of Aligned Living. Another thing that I found out about her, she is also a former fashion business owner and a South African national karate champion. And I'm oh, sure you found out. out. <laughs> Welcome, Anastasia, to the Inside Job. How are you doing today? I'm so great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining the show. Now, Rapid Transformation Therapist. What exactly is that? So it's a form of hypnotherapy developed by Marissa Peer, who is one of Britain's uh, best therapists. And she's developed her own method, which is basically a hybrid between neuro-linguistic programming and hypnotherapy. Oh, sounds fancy. (laughs) <laughs> it's 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 a fancy way of saying that yeah you basically reprogram your subconscious mind under hypnosis okay because i was thinking change when i saw rapid transformation i'm thinking okay there's some sort of a change yeah, yeah absolutely it's like it's like uh upgrading your operating system of the brain it's incredible <laughs> okay it, 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 it sounds exciting um nothing that i've i've I don't think I've ever heard that title before. So it's very intrigued and I wanted to hear more about it. Now, your company, The Art of Aligned Living, can you tell us what the company is all about, the purpose, your mission, your goal? Mm. So I am a therapist and a coach and I support women who are ready to release themselves from self-sabotage behaviors. So upgrade their mindset and align with the abundance that they want to see in their life. I specifically help women who tend to be entrepreneurs or that have personal goals that they want to achieve. But in order for them to achieve that, they need to first reset themselves right realign themselves so they can elevate to the level that they want to be at oh wow Mm -hmm. and so um how does one go about getting more information on the program right so i do help have um group programs and i also facilitate one-to-one bespoke coaching there's no kind of ready self-study programs as per yet but watch this space (laughs) okay okay and now i did notice in an article um that you were saying between the month of march april it was your most abundant month despite covid19 how is it that you were able to prosper in such an economic uncertainty Oh, I love this topic <laughs> and May has, has surpassed my expectations and we're only at the beginning of May. So the idea is that when you've got a good foundation, when you've done the groundwork, nothing externally can shake you, right? Nothing externally can shake your business. Nothing externally can shake your finances. When you've done the foundation work, which is you, because the only common denominator in all areas of your life, your career, your boss, your finances, your, your relationship, your partnership, your parenthood is you. So if you're experiencing problems in any of these areas or you're not experiencing growth in any of these areas, the only common denominator is always you. Once you've done the internal work, because you are the foundation for all the stories that you're building, 
nothing outside can shake you. And I've been doing this work for such a long time. So I was perfectly positioned for growth. And that growth was going to happen regardless of what was happening in the outside world. So I love, love, love that it happened during a global pandemic, during a time when so many other people faced certainty. I had absolute certainty and faith in my abilities to grow. And the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, for example, what one thing, what is, the, what is that the biggest generator, uh, revenue generator for you within that span right now? So it is my coaching. It is women that have kind of been dealt, have been dealt like a bad hand right now. And they're like, oh crap, I need, you know, I, I want what she's having. <laughs> I need this level of resiliency i need this foundation so it's women that have finally had the time and the space to reassess the results that they're getting in their career in their relationships in their finances etc etc and realize that maybe maybe there is something missing so a lot of women have come to me now for business coaching um, but i am putting them through my group coaching program which is the foundation and the prerequisite in order for me to help you start or scale your business awesome awesome and and i can see why especially in a time like this you know coaching and you know what you're doing and empowering these women it's definitely um something that people would gravitate to male or female you know so Great job on that. And, and, and you know, and in line with what you're saying, what your program does and the, co the coaching, um, I came across an article that you posted on your Instagram page and I thought it was very powerful. And I just want to read the last paragraph and then just ask you just two questions on that and get your input. So it says, I have a beautiful home which feels like a sanctuary. And we have the luxury and privilege to have our own space. This doesn't just happen for me. I created this life. It wasn't until I started healing and realigning myself that I began to see results, the results that I desired. Thank you, past me, for getting me there. And I think that's powerful. And from that paragraph, the last sentence stood out to me. The first part where you said that I started um, healing and realigning myself. Usually there's a series of events, good or bad, that forces you to want change. Um, what prompted you to start your healing and realigning process? So it was 2016 when um, I was faced with my biggest opportunity, which at the time I probably would have thought was a challenge, uh, to reassess my life. And that was when my first marriage failed and my business failed and my health failed and everything happened within three months. Everything fell apart for me within three months. So I lost my home, which I built with my previous husband. I'd lost my business because I didn't have the mental capacity and the infrastructure to keep my business going because I was working um, at levels that simply weren't sustainable. And when I wasn't able to keep up because mentally I wasn't able to keep up, then, and physically, my body started to fail me. I, I had a back injury. I had IBS. I was just crippled with pain. Um, I was left essentially homeless had it not been for my parents being loving enough and able to help me pay for rent. Um, I remember, wow, I remember sitting on my... Um, sofa slash bed which was the only piece of furniture that I had in this apartment and contemplating how I could end it because it was just so much easier to find a way out I simply couldn't see a future I was so low um, and I had 
so little value, I guess, for, for myself and my life because I felt that I'd failed on every level. My business very publicly went under. My marriage very publicly collapsed. Uh, and then, you know, my health more privately, but my health deteriorated very rapidly. So it just felt like I'd failed on every level. I'd failed as, as a wife and a woman. I'd failed at love because my relationship failed. I'd failed as, a, as an entrepreneur because I couldn't keep my business. Um, and yeah, I just felt like that was the end. And really that was the opportunity or, or my mom i think actually pointed it out to me she said instead of using your energy to feel sorry for yourself and count your failures why don't you use your energy to see how you're going to move forward and that was it it was like a light bulb just suddenly went on and i was like yeah i get to start over right? I don't have children. I, I don't have that much debt. <laughs> I did have, but it wasn't that much that I couldn't, you know, see myself being able to overcome it. And yeah, my body, I'm young and I'm sure that I can build my body up again to, to get to that level of health and fitness again that I've been at. Um, and that was really when I started to learn to ask for help because before that I hadn't asked for help. I was so busy trying to juggle all these different balls and as soon as I tripped up I dropped everything. So that was when I started asking for help. That was when I started looking for mentors and coaches to work with and that was it was only with their guidance and their help that I was able to find myself again, that I was able to build my business again and, and build up that resiliency that an entrepreneur needs because you do need to be resilient, but you also need to be flexible, which is something that I wasn't in the past because I had such a, a fixation on, on what I expected the outcome to look like on what I expected my, my life, my business, my relationship, my finances to look like. And when I wasn't seeing what I was expecting, it, it just made me work harder and longer and faster instead of slowing down to read the feedback that I'm getting so that I could realign myself. Awful. Now you mentioned that you had a couple failed businesses. Um, do you mind sharing with us what those businesses were and how they prepared you for the business that you have now? Mm, absolutely. Um, so, and I call them failures just because that's the terminology that we use for these. For me now, they are lessons and blessings because if I hadn't had those lessons and blessings, I would not have been able to build the woman and the life and the vision that I have today. Uh, so these failures, I guess you could say was my, my first job. I was a designer. I was working in an advertising agency, um, but I felt really undervalued and underappreciated. Um, and instead of trying to find something else, I rebelled and that caused me to get fired twice because when you are not someone who naturally is inclined to, to look for an authority figure, I knew that I was capable, I knew that I was talented and I felt like I was being stifled. So I was quite rebellious at work and that caused me to lose two jobs, not one. <laughs> Um, and then I said, after the second one, I said, you know what, I'm starting my own business. I'm going to be my own boss. No one's going to tell me again how to do things. Right. Um, and then I started my first fashion brand and I didn't know anything about business. So I thought as long as you're selling, you're making money. And I was selling, I was selling so much. I revenued 120 K in the first year, but I didn't pay myself a salary and the profit of that business was only 11,000. 
So considering that I'd given up the security of a job and I was working 24 seven, so I wasn't just working a nine to five anymore. Um, and I was making so much money, but not really actually making any money. So that business flopped as well. Well, in 2016, that model flopped because um, I didn't have the right margins. And also I wasn't positioned for growth because I was so busy trying to do everything myself that I didn't have time to assess and outsource and consider the numbers, right? It was just go, 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 and sell, 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 sell. So I had crazy sales, but I didn't have the margins to sustain um, growth in that business. And then the second time when I relaunched, Again, a fashion business in the same industry it was footwear before the second time again. I stuck with what I knew. I knew footwear. Mm -hmm. um, I found better manufacturing partners. So that was one of the problems that I had in my first business, which I was too close to, to see the, the hole or the leak in that bucket. I wasn't willing to let go of my manufacturing partners because we'd formed a close relationship, but they were part of the problem um, of, of my margins. So the second time around, I relaunched the brand. I totally up-leveled the product, the quality, and I totally up-leveled the profit margins. So I had much, much healthier profit margins. And I was able to sell that business within 18 months. Wow. How were you able to get healthier profit margins? What, what was the formula? So I got a better manufacturing partner. Um, my previous manufacturing partner actually made me believe, and this is just because of my ignorance, right? Because of my lack of experience, made me believe that I was getting the best price for the best product. Um, so I couldn't find any other manufacturers in my country at the time that could deliver that quality of product. So I just completely, um, you know, I, I didn't even consider looking outside of my country because I was so scared of the level of investment that it would need. And really the second time around, I did find a manufacturing partner in another country that could do a better product for the same price. And if I could have a better quality product, it meant that I could sell it for more. Okay. And, and that's a great point, you know, not getting emotional. They always say don't miss, mix uh, emotions with business, mm -hmm. you know. So you mentioned in the first part, you're a little bit more emotional. You're probably trying to be nice. And um, instead of just doing what's right for the business. And by the second time you did what was right for the business and you were able to sell it in 18 months. That's, that's great. And just going back to um, the last part of that article, you said that, thank you past me for getting me here. How and where did, how did you transition from the past to your current self? Was this all part of the transition or did it start after that? Well, after uh, obviously the, the big bang, <laughs> That was when the new me was born, really. That was when my healing journey started. And it all started with, with me, with me trying to get me healthier, me trying to get me better, so that I could make decisions that were best for my future, not based on my attachments to the past. Okay, and that's great. You know, if, if I come to, let's just say that I'm trying to get my life aligned and I um, attend one of the programs. What is the first steps or the first couple steps that you would um, start off with with these women that come to the program? Mm. So my foundation group uh, program right now is called Abundance Alignment and that is essentially just learning to love yourself because everything, everything, everything outside is a reflection of your relationship with yourself. If your relationship with your finances isn't good, 
that's because you have certain limiting beliefs around money. If your relationship with a romantic partner isn't good, that's maybe because you're searching for something externally that really can't be filled by anyone other than you. If your relationship um, in your business with your clients isn't good, maybe you have certain habits or behaviors, maybe you're a people pleaser, maybe you over deliver and under charge, which again is a reflection of you. And the number one rule, I guess, is don't take it personal. Nothing that happens in this life is a personal attack on you. You are not a victim in this life unless you choose to respond like a victim. I saw that you're a therapist, a coach, a wife, still a newlywed, might I add. Um, you are yoga, Pilates, and ballet instructor. How, and probably more that I'm missing, how are you able to balance or prioritize uh, these different roles? So I don't teach yoga and Pilates anymore. It's something that I did in my 20s. It was one of my side hustles. Um, ballet, again, I haven't taught in like 15 years. <laughs> so these are just things that I love. These are things that made me who I am. They're still a part of my life, but for me, for myself, they're not something that I teach anymore. Um, right now, it's just the therapy and the coaching. That is my full-time career. That is my vision and my mission for how I can best serve women, and how I can best serve this life right now is to help other people find and align their vision and mission so that they can experience the level of growth and fulfillment that they want in all areas of their life. Okay, and what about the husband? How do you um, fit him into that schedule? Oh, my husband is my everything. <laughs> So I, I work from home. Um, his work is pretty flexible as well. We spend a lot of time together. We travel around together as well. We live between London and Cyprus. So um, every summer we, we go to Cyprus for three, four months of the year. Every winter we're in London. And then we'll try to make a couple of trips here and there throughout the year as well. He, wow. is, my, he is my rock. He is my support um in in every in every way i wouldn't have been able to do as much as i have if i didn't have him in my life oh i hope he listens to this and hear how much you love him oh i'll make sure he does <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you will and you know i always like to ask you know uh wrap up with this in 15 seconds or less tell me what the biggest takeaway from our conversation should be I guess the biggest takeaway is number one, don't take things personally. Good things happen to bad people, bad things happen to good people. It does not define you, but it also doesn't need to limit you from striving for more, from wanting to thrive in this life. You should never ever settle. Number two is build a resilient mindset. Learn to ask for help. You do not need to do everything on your own. No man is an island. Thank you, thank you. And you know, I wanted to just, I couldn't go without not mentioning your abundance, is it abundant alignment, the workshop? I call it the movement. Mm, it is a movement. <laughs> good, good. Um, can you just tell me a little bit more about that, where people can find more information, when's the next workshop, mm. you know, if there's one upcoming? Yeah, absolutely. So it's something, it's my way of paying it forward. I feel like these strategies that I've used to turn my life around are everyone's birthright should they choose to learn them. Um, these are skills that we need to develop. It's not that we don't have them, it's simply that somewhere along the way we forgot how to to access them. So I organized this two hour free live training just as an introduction to the strategies that I share that I teach my women to transform their life. And I organize these every couple of weeks. I will share the link with you and you can have it in the description of yeah, this video. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. And you know, thank you so much again, Anastasia, for just being open with us and 
sharing your story. And you know, this conversation, it reminds me of the three women in my life that, that, that helped to shape Ayana. First and foremost, it's my mom. You know, she always taught me from a very, very early age, be confident and you can conquer the world. There's nothing that you cannot do if you put your mind to it and then be fabulous on top of it. And then, you know, I had my sister and my sister, um, she was more my big sister, Janet, more instrumental in my life, in my teenage years, because at that point, you're still trying to get to know yourself. And so she always promoted a positive self image. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned about sisterhood. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I kind of get that as well from listening to you and listening to the workshop sisterhood. So she was always positive. When I was Victoria, she celebrated me. When I failed, mm. she still celebrated me because she would say, okay, that's just taking you one step closer mm. to your victory. And lastly, um, uh, my cousin, who I lived with when I moved to LA, which is where I was before I moved here. And she was, she allowed me to stay in her home. And she was one of, she still is one of the kindest, most humble persons that I know and she taught me how to manage my finances mm. she taught me how to make my money work for me and mm. not the other way around and so I think that you embody all these uh, qualities mm. that I'm speaking about and you know some women may not have the opportunity to have a Carol or a mommy or a Janet but they have you and I feel yeah. that this is where your program comes into play, where you will show them that, hey, you can show them how to manage their finances because you are a business owner and you've had businesses that failed and businesses that succeed. Mm -hmm. And then you're whole and you can show them how to be whole and that being whole doesn't mean that you're perfect. Mm -hmm. So I am so happy that you are able to come on the show and just to share knowledge and also not to be afraid to talk about your failures and your success and just leaving us behind with some good tips. So thank you so much for coming on The Inside Job. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're so welcome. And I just want to remind everyone that we will have a new episode next week, Thursday. It'll be a great one. So please remember to tune in. And as always, Stay safe, continue to stay inside, and God bless.